All right, we are returning from our Labor Day holiday. It's been a week since we've looked at the class, and we're not that familiar with the class. We've only had two classes. So we first need to go to ACES. The easiest way to get to ACES is to just Google search from any computer with an internet connection, LMO ACES, and you will get there. Then you need to log in. That's your own affair. But once you're logged in, here you are. You're going to go to your courses, and you want to make sure you're in the right semester fall 2024, and then you're either in digital media or digital imaging, so you're going to click on the home icon next to that to get to the Canvas site. If it's your own computer, you can bookmark this and get to it directly, but sometimes students get into trouble when they just bookmark this and then go directly to Canvas in that they'll be logged out, and they'll be looking at content, but they're not able to post anything because they're logged out. So if ever something weird happens to you in Canvas, it might be because you are logged out and another student is logged in, especially on shared computers, or that is no one is logged in, <laughs> but you are looking at class materials that are public. But you can always click on this little icon in the upper left-hand corner to log yourself in or to check if you're logged in. It's nice to replace your avatar, which is just your initial, with an image like I've done here uh, under Canvas settings. It's nice to do that for your account just so you can see at a glance that you're logged in and not have to check. All right, so once we are in our class, we are going to go right to shortcut underneath unit modules, which take us through each assignment and give us an intro. If we want to shortcut right to where we post them and work on them, we go to assignments underneath. And this just gives us direct links to those assignments where you post exercise one, Next class, we'll post exercise two. Then we'll start assignment one next week. And then there start to be some resources as well here. But we're just going to shortcut by going right to where you post exercise one. That skips past the introduction to it, which is helpful if you need a reminder. It's past the past examples, which also link to the YouTube page, which I'll open just in case you haven't been aware of them. So this takes us right to the playlist of our NLC Arts page. We are the free setup. So if we look at the, the playlist we started last class, we did these three videos. They are not in the right order, so I'll try to fix that. But one, two, three. And they've gotten a decent amount of views. And it reminds me what I'm using as, as my content, because I haven't looked at this since last Wednesday. So. But that assignments page will take you right to where the directions are and where we post it. So we're following these directions, but instead of being limited to just a banned book theme, we can do a favorite cartoon theme, we can do a favorite children's book theme. I'm choosing my favorite children's book, which is Professor Wormbog and the Hunt for the Zimperumper Zoo. Right? So what did I do? I first found images for that. Where did I save those images? Where indeed? I created a folder, and that is a master class folder. My master class folder starts with my name, all in capitals, then is FA24 for fall 2024, and then says digital art afternoon. I recommend all of you name your master file in this way. It will not get deleted that way. It will always be able to be found because we can always search for your name under that user account because these are shared uh, arts lab computers. So FA24 Digital Art Afternoon. So I know I'm in the right place. Now within that folder, it's kind of messy because I'm going to do multiple exercises and multiple assignments in this folder. I'm going to create a new folder in my master folder and I'm going to call that exercise number one. Now, this is not a digital skills class. This is not a personal organization class. But big part of digital skills, which are needed for digital art, is that you can keep your assets and files organized. So it's up to you, beyond that master file, to keep this organized, right? So you can find what you need to find. I'm going to take all this stuff, which was for exercise one, all my reference images, and most importantly, my PSD, dump it into that one folder. And later today, I'll be making an exercise two folder, and we'll be working on that project. Now, the most important file within those resources, I have my different 
uh, images I found from web searches. Remember my web search, I'm just gonna review some of the basics. I went to Google Images and I searched for, I'll just look for the, uh, the illustrator of my favorite book. And then once I'm in the image search, I wanna go to tools because no, not all images online are equal. I need high resolution images. So if I go to tools, I'll see size as a drop down, and I want it to be large. And according to Google, large is anything that's a, over a thousand pixels in at least one dimension. But I want black line art, like coloring book page kind of stuff. And I can search that, but that might limit what I find. So a better way is to keep your search term broad, but to limit the tools so that it's large and that its color is black and white and that its type is line drawing. And now it's a much better chance that every option here is high quality. For instance, this. So if I hover over it, it says that it's 1,063 by 1,375. I can't trust that because there are a lot of broken tags and sometimes missing images that still have website tags. So to check it, I cannot save it from here. This will always be bad because these are thumbnail images. They're tiny, useless. But I can click on it, get to this view, and now I right click on that and I say open image in new tab. I'll show you the difference. If I open that image in a new tab, it will look full resolution. If I open this image in a new tab, it will look like that because that's how small the thumbnail is. And if I zoom in on that, it's terrible. Zooming is just zooming. But when you ask the computer to enlarge, it has to just invent pixels. Right. And when it invents pixels, when you make a small, a low resolution image, a high resolution image by forcing the computer to make up pixels around each pixel, then it just makes kind of a halo of soft pixels around each pixel. And that's actually what you're seeing in the display here is the computer is actually showing us more pixels than there are. And that's why it looks so hazy and bad. Yep, that's the distortion. So we want high quality. Once we have high quality, and we can verify that by zooming in, then we can save it to our folder or to our desktop to move to our folder. So that's how I got my, my reference images. And I might grab one more. Notice that when you're in the zoomed in view, it will give you similar images, but note these similar images will not have the same search criteria. So these will not all be large. They're just similar images, right? So the, only the large ones will show up in my actual search results. And any time you change your search at all, your search parameters at all, you have to reset your search tools. So that's why I always open in a new tab so I can always go back to my original search results and find something. This one's pretty interesting. Nice little monster. So now open image in new tab. Boom. Now, does this look great? No. no. And that's because even though it is high resolution, they upsampled it and forced it to be high resolution. But they made it so big, like this is 3,000 pixels, that it's still probably pretty good for this assignment as long as it is large, looks good when it's larger than the computer screen. So I can still use this one. But it is interesting, all the ways that images can show up as having lots of pixels, you always do have to check them. Because we all know some people take good photos, some people, people take bad photos, right? They might all be high resolution, but you want the one that's good, that's in focus. It's tough. Yeah, photography skills, whole different thing. All right. So what I showed you in the last three videos last class, was how to start bringing these into a photo P file. It's in these directions as well. So once you have your reference images, at least five, I've got more than five here, then 
you open up your favorite one in photop.com. How do you do that? You click the link or you can just type into your browser window, photop.com. I don't need to log in. I don't need to create an account, even though it's free. I don't need to give them any personal information. I can just use this tool. I hope it stays that way. I love this freeware. It's been this way for a decade. I think they get enough funding from people who want to give them money that it's solvent. It will stay this way. <laughs> so let's hope so. But it is a clone of Photoshop. So now what do I do? If I'm just starting it out, I'm going to take one of my images and open them. And then I have to set the canvas size to be big enough to print. For our class, that is always 8 by 10 or bigger. So the canvas size, you want to measure it in inches, not pixels. So you almost always have to go to inches. And then you want to change that width so it's bigger than 8 by 10. This is already bigger than 8 by 10. It's 8.5 by 11, so I'll just leave it. Next, that doesn't mean it's big enough, though. Next, I want to say OK. And then I want to say image, image size. This is where you change the resolution. Because you need it physically to be your, your full project to be at least 8 by 10 inches at at least not 125 pixels per inch, not 72 pixels per inch, but 300 pixels per inch, which is standard minimum uh, print resolution. So we're going to resample. That's going to grow this image. But it's still sharp enough for what we need. Okay? Much better than those sub 1000 pixel images. Then, and only then, when I can verify under image, image size, that it is larger than 8 by 10 or 8 by 10 at 300 pixels per inch, can I start bringing in my other images on top. And then I want to layer up five or more of them. So if you're doing it on any kind of computer, and you can use your personal laptop here in class too to work on it, but the way you save it and then open it on another computer to keep working on it is to always save it as a PSD. As a PSD. So let's say that I'm happy with this. I've brought in my five layers. I haven't really manipulated them yet. I'm not done, not even close. But what I can do is I can go to File and then Save as PSD. PSD stands for Photoshop Document. It will save all of these layers so that you can open it in Photop or Photoshop and have access to all of that. When we save our files, very important to always save them with our name and then a description. Always put your first name in the name of the file first so that if it ever gets misplaced, we can search for it. Right. So I'm going to call it Carl Exercise 2. And this is a uh, just a sample <laughs> refresh because I've already started this project and worked on it a little bit. Okay, where is that going to save? It's going to save in your downloads folder. So you open up your downloads folder and it should be there. Unless I have mine set to save on the desktop. I have mine set to save on the desktop. So I look for it and there it is. It's a PSD folder or a PSD file that stands for Photoshop document. That is not something you can put online. It's way too big, but it's what we work on. It's what we call a working format. Now, I'm going to open up Photop in a new browser or a new uh, tab on my browser. And then I'm going to drag in the PSD that I was working on last class to continue. And all I do is drag and drop that in. And now you can see it's got all my layers and everything I had done to those layers last class. right? So let's just look at it. First, we learned how to clean them up and then get rid of the white. So let's do that fresh. It's going to keep giving me that because I use the ad blocker. So here's an image. Let's say I want to use this image, but it's really tough to use because it's fully colored, right? But there are black lines in there. So let me show you what to do. The first thing we need to do is size it where we want it. And we size it by going to Edit, Free Transform. 
We're going to be doing this a lot in these exercises. That allows us to